Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Heights Church Adult Sabbath School class. Today is Sabbath, January the 30th, 2021. And uh, we glad, we're glad that you found us. We're continuing in our study, the book of Isaiah, that's this quarter. And um, so far, so good. I've really been enjoying it. I was listening to Pastor uh, Doug Batster the other day, and he said he and his staff have been fighting over who's going to teach the lessons because they love studying and teaching Isaiah. A reminder that Isaiah is called the gospel prophet because in the, in the prophecy of Isaiah, you find many, many references to Jesus Christ and the birth of Christ, etc. And um, Jesus even quotes from the book of Isaiah uh, on a couple of occasions in the Gospels. And so as we study this, uh, we, we will be, I believe, blessed. Um, Julia Comerford is our, our Sabbath School instructor today. And I'm going to turn it over to her right now. And she will either have opening prayer or ask someone else to have opening prayer. And then she'll get started with our lesson. Go ahead, Julia. Thank you, Jeb. Our Father in heaven, we come to you, Lord, with humble hearts. We thank you that you are our Savior and our Lord, and that you are the author of and finisher of our faith. We thank you, O oh God, for this Sabbath day, the Lord's day. And so we ask, O oh God, for your presence in the Holy Spirit, Lord. You are the, our teacher. And we are your students, Lord, so teach us and may we be open to learn the message that you have for us today. Thank you, O oh Lord, for your mercy, your grace, your forgiveness, and for just loving us like you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, the memory text verse for this lesson, who wants to read the memory text verse? Uh, Julia, Anyone? read it. I'll read it. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, I can. Yeah. Thank I you. Spell. This is Isaiah 9, chapter 9, verse 6, on the New King James Version. For unto us mm -hmm. a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Prince of Peace. Amen. Who is being um, talked about here? Who is the prime uh, oh, person that we are hearing this word from Isaiah? Who is Isaiah talking about? Jesus. Amen. Jesus. And, and it tells us that a child is born. And that was because Jesus came as a baby. He was a child and he grew up to be the savior of the world. And so it also says that a son is given. This is God's only begotten son Amen. that is given to us. It says that the whole government will be upon his shoulder. All power, all might, all dominion is upon Jesus, for he owns the world. He owns the whole universe. The earth is the Lord's, the Bible tells us, and all is fullness. Okay? And his name, Jesus has so many names, and they're all wonderful. His name is called Wonderful, Counselor. Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Amen. If we just study and focus on the names of Jesus, uh, we will be filled with the joy of the Lord because we can look at him and we can say, Jesus is wonderful. I mean, he loves me. He has provided for me. He is wonderful in every way, right? Yeah. And he's my counselor. 
if I have a question, if I have a thought, if I have something that I don't understand, I go to Jesus. He will counsel me. He will give me direction, and he will tell me what to do. Okay. And he's a mighty God. There is no other like him. You know, sometimes we focus too much. In fact, many times we focus too much on our problems, on what is going on around us, on the works and power of Satan. But let us remember that God is a, Jesus is a mighty God. And he is our everlasting father. We can run to him, hide under his wings, and he will deliver us and take care of us. And he will not say, let Satan touch us. Amen. Because if he is coming against us and Jesus is in us, who is, com- who is he coming against? Jesus. Amen. And he has been, de- Satan has been defeated already by Jesus. He defeated him at the cross. And then he is the Prince of Peace. When our souls get so anxious and so filled with fear or, or, you know, just thinking of things happening in our world, let us think back to Jesus. Let us look into his face. He is the Prince of Peace. We will have the peace of God in us through Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, Amen. I'm, Julia, I'm reminded of the, the story of Jesus and his disciples on the on the little boat. They were on the lake and the storm came up and mm-hmm. the waves and the water started coming into the boat. And the, the disciples were yes. fear for their life. And Jesus, the Prince of Peace, he stood up and said, peace Amen. be still. And, and Jesus yes. will do that for us. Amen. 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 Look unto him and go run to him. Hide under his wings. He will give us the peace beyond our understanding, right? Amen. Okay. Uh, Dr. Robert Oppenheimer, who who supervised the creation of the first atomic bomb, appeared before a U.S. congressional committee. They inquired of him if there were any defense against the weapon. Certainly, the great physicist said, and that is, Dr. Oppenheimer looked over the audience and said softly, peace. Wow. Hmm. Peace is an elusive dream for the human race. It has been estimated that since the beginning of recorded history, the world has been entirely at peace, only about 8% of the time. During these years, at least 8,000 treaties have been broken. During the half century followed the end of the World War I, which was supposed to be the war to end all wars, there were two minutes of peace for every year of war. Can you imagine? Uh, There's always been war, war, war after war. But the Lord, the peace, the Prince of Peace has been there. You know, for to keep us safe and to keep us focused on Him, you know, and not to just concentrate on all the terrible things going around us. Amen. In 1895, Alfred Noble, the inventor of dynamite, provided a trust to establish a prize for individuals who make an outstanding contribution to peace. However, even some winners of the Nobel Prize, Peace Prize, have been involved in violent comfort. This week, we'll read about the only one who brings true everlasting peace. Does Amen. anyone have anything to add or comment about before we go to Sunday? No? I guess silence is no, right? <laughs> Okay, let's go to Sunday. End of Bloom for Galilee. I'm I'm sorry? I I have a a small comment. You know, uh, Jesus is called the Prince of Peace. And we know that uh, uh, Satan is called the Prince of this earth. So we could call him the Prince of War. The devil? Yeah. Prince of War, yeah. Yeah, Jesus, the Prince of Peace, and the devil, the Prince of War. 
Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And there's two battles raging, right? That's right. Oh, God. But praise God that Jesus is the strongest. Amen. Okay. So why does Isaiah 9 1 begin with a word but or nevertheless that indicates a contrast to what precedes it? Somebody want to read Isaiah 8 21 and 22? Well, let's read Isaiah 9 1 first. Okay, Reuben just joined us. Reuben, can you hear me? Uh, yes, but hold on. Hi, one Debbie. Minute. Hi. Okay, How are so you? De Hi, Debbie. Good. Hi. So, Debbie, okay, do you have your Bible? Let me flip back because I just joined. So, let me flip back to the uh, lesson. I'll read, I'll read Isaiah 9 1, Julia. Can you hear me all? I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I'll read it. Isaiah 9 1. But there will be no more gloom for her who has in anguish. In earlier times, he treated the land of Z Z Zublin and the land of Naphtali. Are you, are you reading Isaiah 1? Nine one. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm on the I'm on the wrong one. Okay, you're right. Yes. Okay. Isaiah nine one. Yes. Isaiah nine one. Okay. But there will be yes. no more gloom for her who was in anguish. In earlier times, Amen. he treated the land of Zublin and the land of Naphtali with contempt. But later on, he shall make it glorious by the way of the sea, on the other side of Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. Amen. 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 So the people were living in darkness, right? As is the shadow of death. And um, and soon they were to see a great, great light. And, you know, who is he talking about there that would see the great light? Us, right? The Gentiles. That's right. That's right. We would see the great light. Praise God that he is no respecter of persons and that, you know, even though in the Old Testament, you know, the, the Jews were his elect. And, but he wasn't forgetting us. And so even today, whoever comes to him can be saved. Amen. Okay. Um, Someone read Isaiah 8, 21 and 22, please. If I could just mention that Isaiah 8, verse 20 says, To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, there is no light in them. That's a verse we're all familiar with. That's verse 20. Yeah. If somebody wants to read the two verses after that, 21 and 22, verse 20 kind of gives it context. So if you mm -hmm. read verses uh, 18 and 19 of Isaiah 8, the Lord warns against his people going to listen to wizards and astrologers and those that peep and mutter. That is, they, they give incantations. You know, they put, uh, you know, bats' wings and roaches inside a big cauldron and stir it like witches do, you know. That's what God is warning against in these passages. And then uh, maybe somebody wants to read verses 21 and 22. Distressed and hungry, they will roam through the land. When they are famished, they will become enraged and looking upward will curse their king and their God. Then they will look toward the earth and see only distress and darkness and fearful gloom. And they will be thrust into utter darkness. Yeah. And it says, by contrast, there will come a time when there will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. Amen. Uh, through all this darkness, again, the light shines and we can see the power and the might of God and his love for all the human race. Right? He is the God of the human race. He is a God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Moses, the God of David, 
the God of the disciples, and he is our God. Amen. You know, Amen. Um, it says here in the lesson, you know, we're to read Isaiah 8, 21 and 22. And it describes the hopeless condition of those who turn to the occult rather than the true God. You know, you, you turn to the wizards and the witches and those kinds of things. And, you know, that's made a big comeback in our society today, right? I mean, there's mm -hmm. a... Yes. Uh, you know, I worked at the university for several years. And let me tell you, there's a lot of people there who are, you know, they may be highly educated, but they, they're really into this stuff. You know, the, the yes, they are. Yes. astrology. And so, and that brings about darkness. And that's why God wants to shine light upon his people and give them hope. Like Julia said a minute ago. Yes. Uh, the region of Lake Galilee is depicted here because it was among the first territories territories of Israel to be conquered. In response to Ahab's request for aid, Tiglath Pileser the third took the Galilee and Transjordan regions of northern Israel, carried some of the people captive, and turned the territories into Assyrian provinces. Second Kings fifteen twenty nine. So Isaiah's message is that the first to be conquered would be the first to see deliverance. You know, and like uh, Jeb was um, saying, you know, we are no different today than the people of Israel were then. You know, God has given us so, so many warnings, you know, of what is going to happen. And, it, and he has told us, you know, if you turn away from me, this and this and this will happen to you. The same thing that happened to Israel. Um, God is very patient. God is very merciful. But there comes a point to where he says, enough is enough. You know, we fill our cup with sin and transgression, iniquity, until it is overflowing. And people who will not... Uh, you know, think of sin as really, really bad, like God thinks of it. You know, we'll go on, you know, living their own lives like they want to, not realizing that God is still in control and that God looks down from heaven and sees what we are doing. He says, abide in me and I will abide in you. And I will deliver you and I will take care of you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. But if you turn away, then disaster will come to you. Not because God wants to do away with us or to cause us harm, but because we have chosen it for ourselves. So today I, I pray and that through this lesson we will learn you know, as we have been learning every night, for we learn for 40 nights, right, from the 40 days of prayer. And we're still learning, you know, as we pray with our partners. And then on Wednesday night and Friday night, and we are learning about the Holy Spirit, being baptized with the Holy Spirit and trusting God. And uh, God is with us. God wants us to be close to him and have that close relationship with him that we cannot have with anyone else. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> um, whom does God use to deliver his people? Isaiah 9, 6, and 7. His I son, right? Jesus. Okay. For well, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of Amen. the infinite government and peace, there will be no end. Mm -hmm. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice. From, the time, from that time forward, even forever, the seal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Amen. 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 So the, who will deliver his people? Jesus, the Son of God, right? Yes. 
So yeah. how was the prophecy of Isaiah 9, 1 to 5 fulfilled? Matthew 4, 12, 25. Shall we turn there? Yes. Matthew 4. Matthew 4, 12. That, that is a long one. So uh, we see here that um, verse 15 says, The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness saw a great light. We went through that a while ago. So this prophecy was fulfilled. And and I, you know, I just want to uh, press that, you know, how do we know that the prophecies that for the future will be fulfilled? They were fulfilled in the past. What, why wouldn't we Yes. Do? Yes. They... We see that the prophecies in the past fulfilled already. So we Not can have the confidence that, amen. So Good we doctor. can see that the prophecies in the future will be fulfilled as well. That God cannot lie, right? And right. what God says he will do, he will do. And exactly. Rebecca is quoting from First Peter where it says here, might be second Peter, says here, um, uh, first Peter, uh, second Peter 19, second Peter chapter one, verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto we do well that we take heed as a light that shines in darkness. So uh, we have those promises that mm -hmm. those, those uh, prophecies will be fulfilled. Amen. Anything else before we won't go to Monday? No. Okay. okay. A child for us, and that uh, Debbie just read Isaiah 9, 6, and 7. Here is a third special birth in the book of Isaiah, following mentions of the birth of Emmanuel in Mahershalal, whatever. I, <laughs> it, that's a long word. <laughs> how'd, you, how'd you like to name your baby Mahershalal Hashbaz? <laughs> I don't think so. I I would never be able to call his name if he if he was in trouble before I got through to the name he would be hurt. <laughs> he'd, he'd, he'd get his spanking before he got his name out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. So what is special about the child found in this verses? I say on nine, six, and seven. Well, one yeah. thing he is the eternal God. Amen. You know, uh, you know, all other gods on this earth, you know, they die and they, you know, they just, but Jesus is alive forever and ever. So whatever, you know, whether we are 10 or 20 or 80, whatever our age, Jesus is still the same. Jesus is still alive for us. Right? Right. Yeah. You know, Notice uh, that this deliverer, I'm sorry, I was gonna somebody say, was going to say something. I remember when I was in high school, we studied the, we studied about the gods of the Romans and the gods of the Greeks. Do you all remember doing studying them? And, um, mm -hmm. you know, they were all, uh, they had human-like characteristics. They would get angry and, you know, they, they were capricious. In other words, they could, they were rash. They did foolish and dumb things. And um, mm -hmm. and then you read about Emmanuel. That means God with us. God condescended to become a man. You know, the gods of the Romans were Jupiter and Saturn and, you know, Mars, yeah. Venus. And our God is much vaster than that, but yet he became a man. Anyhow, that just crossed my mind. Okay, Ruth DeGroff has joined mm -hmm. us. So we've got somebody else that's joining us. And I don't actually see okay. her. Oh, they joined the 40 days of prayer instead of the 
instead of the Sabbath school. So I'm not sure how to help them uh -huh. out. Okay, go ahead, Julie. I'm sorry. I was just noticing that somebody was trying to join our class and they joined the 40 yeah. days of prayer. Go ahead, Julia. Okay, well, um, he is the eternal God living forever and ever and ever. So we can trust him to be with us now, to be with us tomorrow, to be with us for eternity. Amen. Given these attributes where uh, in the verse above, he, re he is referred to as divine, the mighty God, the eternal creator, everlasting father. And in Luke 338, Adam, son of God. He is the king of the dynasty of David. His kingdom of peace will be eternal. And I think, you know, reading this um, words, you know, it makes us realize that Jesus, of being God, all God, he also became human, right? He also became like one of us. And so he knows what we're going through. He knows our thoughts. Sometimes that can be frightening. You know, he knows what I'm thinking. He knows what I'm going to say before I say it. He knows what path I'm going to take before I take the first step. God knows all things. And he is eternal. He, so okay. given this attributes whom alone could this child be christ the savior of course the son of god that's right some have attempted to identify him with king hezekiah but the description far surpasses any ordinary human being only one person fits jesus christ the divine son of of god and creator and then we have all these scriptures following who uh and all these scriptures, you know, in some way tell us who was born to us in order to save us and give us peace. He has received all authority in heaven and on earth, and he is with us always, Matthew 28, 18, 20. While retaining his divinity, he also has become human for all time, ever able to sympathize with our weaknesses, Hebrews 4, 15. Unto us a child is born forever forever Amen. um are we ready to go to tuesday or is there any more that you want to add for monday or comments anything okay we'll go to tuesday the rod of god's anger this section explains nine one to five which predicts a deliverance for the gloomy, anguished people who had trusted in the occult and fallen prey to military conquest and oppression. The rod of their oppressor you have broken as on the day of media. And you know, Jeb just a while ago was going through what these people had gotten into, the occult. You know, and there's so many different ways to get into the, the occult. I mean, so many different things there in the occult itself, you know, that we can get involved in. And I um, also, when I was probably in my 20s, early 20s, or late teens or early 20s, um, I came across this uh, reader of the palms, you know, and... Uh, and boy, you know, you can very easily get rid of these people. I mean, they hunt you and they hunt you. I made the mistake of um, listening to her, you know, li telling me, you know, what she could tell me about my future and, um, you know, and that I would be educated and I would, oh, so many things. Well, I guess she took that as I was ex accepting everything that she was telling me and, and she had me she was after me she and I don't know how but she found out where I lived and she went to my house you know I was it was I was it was in my 20s because I was already out she went to my house and uh and she started looking around my room and she liked it 
oh, I would like to have that. And I would like to have that. You know, you don't have to pay me any money. Just give me this and that and that. And I was so scared. But, and I didn't know Jesus then. I mean, I knew about God, but I didn't have a personal relationship with him. And I was praying, God, what do I do? You know, I want this lady out of my house. And so I started praying and praying and praying. And uh, and she was touching everything like she was going to take it. And, but I believe with all my heart that Jesus kept her from taking all the things, you know, that she was interested in, which wasn't much, but it was what I had. And, uh, so finally, I got her out of my house, and and I and I began to realize how powerful these people are, and how powerful Satan is, and he's the one that's working behind these people. And uh, thank God that he delivered me from that, and as he has delivered me from so many other things, you know, in my life, you know that. You know, if we're not careful and if we don't have Jesus, we are very likely to fall for everything that Satan has to offer. Praise God that he delivers us even when when we are not aware that Jesus is God. Jesus is the everlasting father, the mighty, mighty God. Because like I said, at that time, I knew about God, but I didn't know him. So let us not lose hope. Let us continue praying and praying and praying and praying for our loved ones, for our families, for our neighbors, for our friends. Amen. You know, who don't know Jesus yet. Many who who know Jesus, but they are confused of, from one thing or some other thing. They're confused. They don't know wh- which way to turn. They want uh, uh, to be delivered, but how, you know? So, but God hears our prayers and he will not forsake us, nor leave us, nor turn away from us. He will never cast us away from his presence if we want to hang on with him. But yeah. but so many people all over the world, you know, are in that uh, confusion, you know, uh, or they are... You know, um, they don't know where to turn. The burdens on them have been so heavy that they cannot even pray. So God is using us to pray and to intercede and to bring these people out of the condition they're in to Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen, Julia. Julia, the... uh... The, the little uh, uh, incident that you talked about uh, mm-hmm. at, at that point in time, could, could you, could you feel the darkness? Oh, I could feel, well, uh, I could feel something very, very ugly, you know, like, like it was surrounding me. Like I was in a, in a hole or in a, in a, a like a group was around me that I I couldn't get away from. Yeah, it was really yeah. really awful. Yeah, it's really scary. You know, going back to to uh, you know the darkness and and things like that. We had a lady in church, and uh, uh, she asked if she could uh, study the Bible with us in her home on Sabbath afternoon, and so we invited some other people in, and. And one of the first things that she said was that uh, you guys are special because just not, and we were studying the Bible, she said, just not anybody can be involved in this, in this teaching. And immediately, Umai and I, this darkness, it was in our home, and we were actually scared. And uh, yes. so... Uh, uh, as soon as we could, we we got rid of them, and I, I think she was a shepherd's rod because she she hung out with this lady that uh, 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 
went mm -hmm. to the conference and, and, and claimed to have new light. And of course they threw her out, but this lady continued to go throughout all the churches in the area we lived in. Uh, but it, the, the darkness is, uh, is just overwhelming. And, and I wonder mm -hmm. about the people that do these things. If, if, if Satan has so much control over them that they don't even, obviously they don't realize the darkness, but I, I thought I would mention how dark, you know, the Bible talks yeah. about light and yeah. darkness yeah. and, and yeah. there's absolutely zero, zero light. If, if, if it hadn't been daytime, it would have, we wouldn't have, it would have been like, uh, uh, when the Egyptians had darkness <laughs> and you can't see mm -hmm. anything. Yeah. Anyway, I thought I'd mention that. Very Thanks. Well, yes, you know, I just thank God that, you know, his name is powerful, you know, and we might, like I said, I, I didn't really know. I wasn't uh, in Jesus at the time, but I knew of God. And so I just, started, you know, praying and praying, oh God, you know, and, and God hears those prayers. He knows where we are, but, but like you said, uh, Ron, you know, the darkness is so heavy and the power of Satan over us is so heavy. Um, when we don't have Jesus in us, we don't, we are no match for Satan, but with Jesus, with God, the Almighty, the, the, the Father who loves us so much. I mean, he delivers us. We cannot deliver ourselves from this, from the works of Satan. It's impossible. But God will deliver us. And Amen. so, and there are Amen. many, many, many people now, you know, in that condition, you know, where they, they can't get out of it. They cannot get out of it. And that's where we come in with our prayers to God for them. We don't know who they are or where they are, but we know that these things exist. So we can pray and pray and pray. God deliver these people from the possession of Satan, from his works, from his power. And I believe God answers our prayers. Amen. No doubt. Amen. You know, uh, yeah. Ron, you said you brought this woman in innocently, right? You thought you were doing a good thing. <clears throat> and then you realized, you know, that, hey, this is this is bad news. Um, I remember a pastor talking about how, you know, the Philistines are the enemies of God's people, right? They're pagan. They worship the occult and those kinds of things. And, you know, and back in those days, God warned his people not to have anything to do with them, right? They were the enemies of Israel. <laughs> and then he says, and yet we bring the Philistines into our homes every day when we turn on the TV. Do you know what I'm saying? Not everything on TV is that mm -hmm. bad like that. But we, we need to be careful what we let into our homes. You know, you and you and, and Umay said, wait a minute, this is not right with this woman. And you did everything you could to get her out of your house because you could tell that something was wrong with her. She was possessed with something. There was a kind of a taint. Oh right? yeah! Anytime anyone says that that this isn't for everybody uh, to hear, then you know it's wrong because there's nothing. There's you, you're not too old or too young to learn in the Bible, and everybody's a student of the Bible. And uh, boy, it was it was scary. I can't remember how long she stayed there, but boy, we actually called her a pastor and asking what we should be doing. I mean, how can we get rid of this, this, this feeling that we have? And uh, right. I just counsel just a little bit. Yeah. You know, oh. an experience I had when um, one time I went over where I slept at a place um, for a week and every single night I had the same um, feeling of darkness that was just, it was a black shadow. I could not make out a person. It was a black shadow, but he would keep coming closer and closer, wanting to like surround me till the last night. Mm -hmm. 
I finally actually woke up and threw up and I wasn't sick. It was just that terror and whatnot. And once I mm-hmm. left that place, I was fine. Um, but later on, I found out, you know, there was uh, that person would always play down there, uh, Black Sabbath, um, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And so I was, I knew it's like, okay, the devil is down there. And that was when I was little. Yeah. So yeah. I do, you know. But and the thing I is, you out, know, there I are realized... so many. Yeah. Yeah. There are so many ways, you know, that Satan uses to get people into all these dark places, you know. Uh, he's working so hard on our children, young people. Um, anymore, you know, they come out of school, of the universities, you know, with this total different interpretation of what they have been taught at home, even from good parents. And and then there's these games, you know, that they play. They they are so addicted to these games, you know, that nothing else matters, you know. Uh, the smartphones, I mean, you can't even talk anymore, even adults, you know, you can't even hold a conversation with them because they're so busy, you know, texting or, you know, playing games on their phone or something, you know. Uh, I was at a doctor's office also quite a while back, some couple of years ago or something. And they're, you know, waiting in the waiting room. And there was this lady, um, you know, with her phone, you know, whatever she was doing on her phone. And, uh, and they called her and they had to call her several times. And finally, you know, I said, you know, you're being, are you this person, you know, said her, you know, and I had to almost yell, at her, you know, to get her attention. And she said, yes. And I said, well, they're calling you. She was so, I don't know, uh, her mind, her her whole being, you know, was on what she was doing on the phone. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, and Satan can use that. And Satan can use so many other areas of our lives, you know, to bring in all this things that we can get involved in. And at, at the beginning, it just seems so innocent. You know, what's wrong with my playing this game? Or what's wrong with my watching this? Well, you know, you keep watching that and you will get addicted. And pretty soon there will be stronger and more powerful things that Satan will get you involved in. All right, or wrong, or... No. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, Isaiah nine uh, eight through eight through ten two. What sins are the people guilty of? Against whom have they committed them? And who is guilty among them? Well, there were there was arrogance of heart, teachers of lies, hypocrisy, discerning or uh, deceiving. Um, unrighteous, they had so many unrighteous laws, which they have perceived by this, because uh, I can't even read my own writing, before their own authority, and they also were robbing the poor and the needy. Mm-hmm. Is that going on in our time today? You know, people... We hear more and more and more lies. We are being, you know, hearing more and more deceit. We are hearing and watching murders and all of that. We're going back, you know, to what the people of Israel had become. And, you know, when 9-11 happened, soon after that, I mean, people were ready to go to church and the you know, buy Bibles, you know, the stores were getting empty of Bibles and oh, all this turning back to God. How long did it last? As soon as the terror was over, people started back to their own way of life. And God has always 
given us warning after warning after warning. And when people repent, turn back to him, he forgives us, he takes us back, and then we forget him again and again and again. But it's because um, we're only, they only turn to God out of fear. Um, not, there was no true conversion, I don't believe there. It was just, a, yeah. uh oh, you know. So, yeah. And this was the same way with Israel, right? Oh, God, we don't want to go through this. We don't want to. Do... So, yeah, and we do the same today. And and we have to remember, you know, God's word was not written for the world. It was written for us, the people of God. So when we read the word, God is speaking to the people, his people who believe or who want to believe. Uh, maybe a lot, you know, when I first started reading the Bible, I could not understand anything. <laughs> and I was in a church where, you know, I I received Jesus in that church. Praise the Lord for that. And immediately I wanted to be involved in something. And so there was an opening, you know, for a uh, teacher. <laughs> In the, I think it was the fourth and fifth graders. And, and so somehow, I don't know whether I was asked, somehow I, I got in it. I didn't know the Bible. These kids knew the Bible more than I did. And they were teaching me. And so many times I was embarrassed. I was ashamed because, uh, they corrected me. And I thought, <laughs> I don't think this is for me. I better get out of this. I don't know what I'm doing. And and so I got out. But God was merciful again and again. He's always merciful. Amen. But Amen. the wicked will pay the consequences of their evil deeds. Let's not be fooled that they won't because they will. So... Julia? Anyway. Uh-huh. May I add in something that's really impressing on me right now? Sure. Um, as I'm reading Isaiah 9 and the mm -hmm. passages that we're just talking about, my heart's just really impressed on in Isaiah 9 how the Lord, three different times, he brings out what's happening with the people and with the government and the wickedness. But each time at the end, like say Isaiah 9, 12, he says, yet for all of this, his anger is not turned away. His hand is still upraised. Mm -hmm. And then in verse 13, mm -hmm. he goes on to say about how, you know, the things that they were continuing to do, turning away from the Lord, and then verse 17, again, he says, yet for all of this, his anger is not turned away. His hand is still upraised. And then it goes on from 18 to 20, the same thing, but they continue to turn away from the Lord. They continue to not heed to what he's trying to, to warn them about. But at the end, it says mm -hmm. in verse 21, yet for all of this, his anger is not turned away. His hand is still upraised. And so that brings me back to Isaiah 8, where it talks about Jesus, the wonderful counselor, the Prince of Peace, and his kingdom is about peace and God's love. And that's why I believe it says that, that Jesus his kingdom's going to reign with justice and righteousness. Because mm -hmm. that's God's yeah. character, is one of justice and righteousness. And Amen. He's calling out and calling out and calling out to us over and over and over again. 
Yes. But at some yeah. point, all of that sin has to be destroyed. Mm-hmm. Amen. Thank you for that. That is very good. And, I, I know and Jeff uh, could relate. I know Jeff could relate to this because he's a former smoker as well. You know, when 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 I first quit smoking, you know, you know, you you have people tell you, yeah, I, I, I it's easy to quit smoking. I do it every day. And it, but yeah, you know, if you as long as you keep trying you know, and, and keep handing it over to God, you know, that, that's what counts. You got to hand it over to God, even if it's every day, you know, you quit smoking every day, you know, it, 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 it is hard to quit smoking and it is, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and if you try to quit sin by yourself, it is hard, but as long, yeah. as, long as you hand it over to Jesus, you know, even if you have to do it every day, you just never quit. Never quit quitting. <laughs> I love what you're saying, yeah. Ruben. I love what you're saying. Because Jesus' hand is not shortened toward us, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I have a sister that, uh, a real heavy smoker. She finally, finally did quit. But she would quit. She For two months, you know, she would not have a cigarette, but she was miserable. And she kept thinking about the cigarette. I mean, it was in her mind. And and then she would get back to smoking again. And it seemed like every time that she went back to smoking, it was even harder and harder and harder for her to, to quit because the cigarette became sweeter and sweeter all the time, you know? But she finally did quit. So praise the Lord. Today she's not a smoker anymore. It, 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 it was hard, harder for me to quit smoking than it was for me to quit the methamphetamines. If if you could believe that, mm. it was harder to quit <clears throat> yeah. smoking than hard drugs. You know, um, yeah. when we did the five day plan to stop smoking, you would hear people say that exact thing. They they were addict had been addicted to heroin and alcohol and other things. And the last thing they were giving up was cigarettes. That's how strong mm -hmm. that, that addiction is, but but they got the victory over it. Yeah. You know, to some people, it's like a security blanket. I don't know, because my, my sister would say, <clears throat> excuse me, my sister would say, but you know, uh, I am going through this and it's so bad and uh, a small, you know, a cigarette will calm me down. I want, I want to be calmed down and a cigarette will do it. And, you know, that was her yeah. security blanket. She would get a cigarette and it would calm her. And so she thought that was a good thing. Yeah, that's, well, and that's, and it, that's, it's a good thing to, to get that calmness, you know, but the source that was doing it was not good. I worked at UNM in smoking prevention, tobacco prevention, any form of tobacco, you know, and, you know, I used to hear that all the time from, from people. And physically, you know, to your body, it does not calm you down. It actually stimulates your heart. It stimulates mm -hmm. your body. It does not, you know, it, and it's a trick that Satan plays on you. It's a lie, yeah. you know, to make you think that yeah. it's going to calm you down. But it doesn't, you know, it's just... yeah. You know, it's just one of those things where an, another one of Satan's lies. This is Stella. I just want to say something. On Thursday's lesson, which I, I like, on, on Isaiah 12, 2, Jesus is the deliverer. And it says here, God is my salvation, and he has become my salvation. So if we can remember that, we can overcome a lot of, like, addiction. A lot of things. So. Yes. Amen. Yeah, uh, Julia. he's the answer, huh? He's the Julia. answer. Well, uh, you know, I'm sorry. Julia, I need to, I need to give you a two minute warning. So uh, I okay. need to wrap up in two minutes. Go ahead. Okay. Well, uh, Wednesday we've gone just about everything that's on Wednesday's lesson, right? So let's go to Thursday. You comforted me. Yeah, that's was read too. 
And so we come down to compare this song in Isaiah 12 to Revelation 15, 2 to 4, 2 to 4, the song of Moses and of the Lamb. What are they both praising God for? His works, his ways, his holiness, and he is our salvation, and he has done excellent things. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, so what is the significant significance of the idea contained in the name of Jesus? That the Lord is salvation. Amen. So, like um, we've all been discussing, you know, God is the answer. Jesus is the answer. Let us turn to him. Okay. Amen. Somebody wants to say our closing prayer? I'll pray. Kind Heavenly Father, we thank okay. you for this opportunity to uh, come together as a group and uh, study about you. And Lord, we just ask that you would forgive us of our past unkind deeds and thoughts. And may this lesson uh, be an, an example to us that we have to hang on to Jesus, the, the comforter and uh, the great uh, I am. And we thank you, Lord, for everyone that showed up this morning. We ask that you would dismiss us with your presence today and forgive us of our unkind deeds and thoughts and be with us uh, throughout this Sabbath day and coming week and just protect all of us, uh, our health. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And amen. Well, thank you for all your, um, for being there. I cannot see you, but I can hear you, and I love you all. And uh, and thank you for helping me uh, and uh, offering all your help and your, your comments, your words. They were all a help to me. Thank you.